everybody. Um, just got a quick video here. Um, we're trying to see if we can help out Randy Richards um, with his cement mixer rebuild that he's working on. Um, he just uh, recently rebuilt the motor and I've got the exact same motor. So um, we'll have a look here in a second and we'll, we just, um, Eventually, we're probably going to do the same thing, rebuild this motor, but uh, we just took a quick look, opened it up to see uh, what size capacitor is in there, starting capacitor, because uh, Randy's didn't have any labeling on it, and uh, mine actually had a label, and it's a little different. It's from 1943, quite a bit older, but um, anyway, stick around, have a look, and then uh, after that, we're going to look at the uh, at our stickers. We finally got them all up on the board. So we'll take a look. So I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but uh, Randy just did a rebuild on this exact same motor. It's an old GE um, one horsepower. Uh, this one came on my South Bend lathe and it ran when I got it. Um, but uh, after I did the uh, cleanup on the lathe, I put a different motor on, so I never used this one. That has a really cool <laughs> little cap there. Still in pretty good shape. GE. So, um, and you'll notice the uh, vents here are on the top side because these end bells have been rotated because this motor actually mounted upside down in the lathe. Now we get the neighborhood kids testing out their uh, go kart. Okay, guys. <laughs> I don't know if this is showing up on the camera or not, but uh, remember, this thing ran. <laughs> oh, can you guys see that? Let me get you in here a little closer if I can. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing of beauty. Now, this has been sitting outside. I mean, I've had it covered up, but uh, it looks like we may have had a rodent in there. Let me get a couple close-up shots. Okay, so interesting. This is a plain bearing or journal journal bearing motor, where Randy's was um, roller bearings. Um, now, his let's see, if bring you around over here a little more. So his nameplate. There was an extra um, title on here. I think it was something capacitor. Um, so it's probably a little newer. Like I say, this was 1943. Let's see what we got in here. Hey, <laughs> uh, I should have uh, a respirator on for this. I'm just gonna. That is a mouse. What's left of a mouse? Wow. This is unreal. <laughs> But surprisingly, it doesn't look like he did any damage. 
Oh, look at this. What do we got here? <laughs> a 928. <laughs> Huh, interesting. I don't think that has anything to do with the motor. It's probably something that just fell in there. Wow. Yeah, it looks like he's been all over in here. And then, of course, then we got the metal chips sitting on the windings here, which is not good, but I don't see any real damage. Wow. All right, let me, uh, let me get something to put this mouse carcass in what else we got to do here so we got i don't want to damage these wires got a little extra loop of wire right there okay and then up in here that's a looks like the thermal overload. Okay. I just noticed there's a a little thrust ring for the bearing in there. Make sure you don't lose its position. Okay, guys, I'm gonna grab the little vacuum cleaner and suck all this stuff out of here, and I'll bring you guys back. Been about 10 minutes vacuuming this out. And next thing I want to do is um, try to get this thermal overload loosened up. I really don't want to unhook the wires. I'm going to try to, I've got two screws here, try to bring it out as an assembly. Looks like one side is broken. Well, my hand's probably in the way there. Yeah, it's just it's just some kind of plastic. Corners broke off. If, if we uh, decide to rebuild this motor, we'll probably either have to replace this or come up with a different method of motor protection. Okay, so yeah, it's just a just a thermal disc, and, uh, and the wire connections don't look so good. This wire looks really bad on the outside, but this is a cloth covering, and it, it's got some kind of a oh thermal plastic uh, insulation on the wire itself. All right, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so here's something that's, um, well, let me get these guys out of here. Okay. So, I don't know if you guys saw Randy's video. His motor had two, or one capacitor. This one's got two. And it looks like they're wired in parallel. I'm going to try to get this centrifugal switch out of here to get it out of the way or just lo loosen it up. I was uh, playing with the switch off camera a little bit. It doesn't look too healthy. It just doesn't feel right. So we'll see what it looks like when we get it apart here. I'm sure there's nothing available as far as parts for this thing. So if, um, if we find a critical component such as this that's not repairable, we're probably done. It's okay, might just need a little cleanup. Okay, well that's that's good. Alright, we're gonna try to loosen up these capacitors. That's what we're here for. We're trying to get something off the nameplate or label if they labeled these. Let's 
get an idea of what they are as far as capacity. So they'll, they'll have a, a microfarad rating and, and a voltage rating typically. breaking any of the wires or ah, look at that there's a label okay let's turn that okay I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera okay and then the, what I want to see is are these wired in parallel okay so let's take a look here so coming from the start switch going to one side over here goes to this side looks like they're parallel which would make sense you putting capacitors in series is stupid because you, you're just making it a smaller capacitor okay that goes there yeah they're parallel okay so when you parallel a capacitor you add them together so if these were let's just th theoretically if these were 10 microfarad and you put two in parallel now you got a 20 microfarad and the voltage rating would stay the same i guess if you had them in series maybe the voltage rating would 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 increase okay all right i'm going to shut the camera off for a minute guys i'm going to get the magnifying glass out and i'll get you a close-up picture of these uh, labels and uh, I don't know if it'll help Randy or not, but uh, at least we, uh, we've got something to work with. Okay guys, I put the end bell back on, put it back together off camera. Um, I'm gonna pull this front end bell just out of curiosity and uh, see if there's any more mice in there. <laughs> and at least give it a little bit of a cleaning and then it's going back in storage. snug them up because this is going to come apart again at some point okay all right well that's all we're doing i'm going to go put this thing back out in the shed <laughs> probably for another five years we'll see what happens guys we finally got everybody's stickers up on the board it's been a while let's just take a pass around here it was, it was hard to get back here i had so much junk stored in this area but uh, give everybody a chance to look for their sticker There you go. All right, well, hey, thanks everybody for, for stopping by and sticking with me. So I'll throw up a couple snapshots of a little bit of the remodel work, um, mainly the bathroom. And we're, got, we're gonna have more stuff coming. It's just so busy right now. Um, it's probably going to be, you know, a few more months of, uh, you know, just in, intense uh, 
<laughs> work on the house and work is super busy as well. So, but uh, we're going to get caught up eventually and then uh, we can start cranking out some more videos. All right. Hey, thanks everybody. And uh, please subscribe um, if you can uh, hit the like button and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All righty. The bathroom is almost finally done. Didn't take long for the family to start moving their stuff in. <laughs> Just got to do a backsplash and a wall cabinet. <laughs>